I no. would say we're back, but we're, we're like kind of back because Katie is not here again. She's like off <laughs> living her best life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just me, though. I have once again a fantastic guest with me. Uh, it's none other than the Blades of Frontier. <laughs> Theo Solomon, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Blade some days, Theo Solomon other days. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's like the greatest role ever to be honest like, no, i love it honestly honestly love it yeah it's stuck as well the blade of frontiers people love that like when he first shows up in the game it's like the typical like the superhero arrived <laughs> kind of, <and> just, like... <laughs> that's a good thing though i guess that's a good thing and um, oh, it's the best <laughs> it's um even that gesture the Blade of Frontiers is stuck. It's really stuck. I just find myself doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I'm not surprised, to be honest. Like, how, how many years did you work on it? Was it like four or? or... So I I wasn't on it four years. Um, I wasn't on it four years. So the rest of the cast, so Neil, Devra, Jennifer, mm-hmm. they've been on the project for, yeah, three and a half, four years. Yeah. I came onto the project in December. So like last year? Last December. year, December. Oh. So Larian wanted to do something new with Will. They wanted to okay. completely revamp him and his storyline. So they brought me on board and I basically had to do that three and a half years work from December just gone. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay, that must have been a <laughs> challenge for sure. Oh, honestly, honestly. I did I had no idea the kind of scale of the project yeah. when I was brought in. Mm-hmm. Um so I was literally living in the mocap suit and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> honestly, like day after day I was Will Ravenguard. But did you do any mocap beforehand or was this like the first ever experience of, of being in a mocap suit and, and doing this kind of job? I did some mocap, um, okay. a very, very small bit. I played like a soldier for like a day okay, uh, doing some motion capture, but no way near anything of this scale, not like a named character mm-hmm. kind of thing. So yeah, it feels weird to say, but this was my first kind of proper mocap job I kind of it's a good one. <laughs> oh, it's an amazing one it's an amazing it's yeah an amazing... I, I would say it's probably the best one to be honest I could do. yeah no for sure for sure I feel like I I skipped a few steps but yeah no, so it's, it's okay you learn <laughs> while you're doing it that's yeah. <laughs> that's how you roll yeah yeah was no, it it's... difficult to to get into that or or was it like a instant like okay I know what to do yeah so Will is the character. Mm-hmm. I kind of, I think I'm. I had him down from day one. Okay. You know, I had him down from day one. Even when I got the breakdown of the character, I knew what he was straight away. He's upstanding warrior, nobility, righteous. So I had that down. And I've only done sort of TV and theatre before, so mocap's a complete different ball game. You know, you're yeah. you're in this suit. You've got all these dots. You're you're mic'd up. You've got headphones. You've got people speaking to you in your ears you've got to hit your mark and make sure your body's doing certain things so that took some getting used to for Mm. sure but then once you kind of get into the swing of things it kind of flows naturally and then I guess your body and your voice are moving in synergy so Mm -hmm. you kind of get that that flow state when you can just be in the character and not be worrying about oh have I moved my arm in that do you know what I mean yeah yeah <laughs> we, we talked with Deborah and and she mentioned the same thing like you know just getting used to the whole like because it's it's a different thing than doing theater and also not so different in a way sure, sure. Uh, but like you know then you just have to stand there and and wait for them to be like okay now you can move <laughs> or just just exactly. messing out your body and everything it's, yeah it's a good one I really want to try it at one point <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. Just learning the nuance of movement as well. Because you can't be as small as TV and you can't be as big as theatre. There's like that happy, excuse me, kind of medium in the middle that you want to find. Because if you're doing all this in the game, <laughs> it's gonna look it's gonna look a bit mad. So Yeah, and the animators would be like, why why? 
why are you doing this? Be like, <laughs> is my game glitching? Like, what's going on? Yeah. What's going on with Will? <laughs> Just having a dance or revive or whatever. <laughs> I mean, you can for sure, but like, yeah, you can. You why can. not? Why not? Yeah. All right. So th then uh, the question comes up like, how did this role find you? Or was it like a whole casting process? Or were you involved previously, but not this much? How did this, this whole thing happen? I believe I had a possible casting for Will at the beginning. Okay. The beginning process. So when I started in 2020, when I got cast again, it was it was pretty smooth sailing. Because I, I remember when I got cast again, when the audition came around again, I was like, oh, wait, I remember this. Because obviously, <laughs> you know, years, years had passed. Yeah. The journey I went on with Will, I had no, no, no clue. And... Mm -hmm. I'd say because everybody else had worked on it for three or four years, that kind of helped me a little bit mm -hmm. because I was able to kind of dive into the world and everybody knew the world, like the back of their hands. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was in the studio like, wait, what happens with this character? And they're like, oh yeah, that happens there. Yeah. This situation there. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it, um, it kind of helped like jumping in and, you know, when they say like getting thrown into the deep end, mm -hmm. I guess that I was right. just I was just thrown in. Like yeah. I was working. Is it easier or harder that way? For me, it was easier. Okay. Because I had the luxury of doing days back to back to back to back to back. Whereas I think others may have done a day here, maybe like, you know, days in between or weeks in between. But I was just constantly yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. So for me, that kind of it gave me the security of like, oh, I know this guy. I'm I'm being him as much as I'm being myself. Yeah, we went from there and we we got rolling. It was good. Good. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Did because obviously, again, mocap is different from doing TV or film. Uh yeah. how much were you in the studio with the other castmates, like you know, Jennifer, Sam, Neil? Or, or was it always just you and the mocap coordinators or whatever? Were they able to help you at all or give you advice on on how to do things or how to get into it easier, I guess? Neil directed me. Okay. Neil directed me um, for one or two sessions. Jen directed me. But Tim and Devra, like, I only ever saw them in passing. Do you know what I oh, mean? Okay, okay. It was kind of like a, like a nod. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, just like I a work nod. here too. <laughs> yeah. You're here too, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it was one of them ones, and then kind of came together afterwards. Neil was a really big help, just because he's so experienced and kind of guiding me through. And you know, the directors as well. Like, got to take huge credit for this game. Like, yeah. they are so good at just drawing what is required from the scene out of you. And knowing what to say specifically to me, Theo, or specifically to Jen or Neil to get the best out of us. So huge credit to them as well. Neil Neil was good as well for like um kind of like preparing for what was gonna happen post release. Okay. So the all the media attention and everything. Yeah, like I didn't know any of that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because I've come on so late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've just I've not known anything. I'm talking like late in the game. Yeah. I didn't know. Which is quite good, I guess, because um, I, I mean, could just focus on the work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think <laughs> it makes it a, a tiny bit easier in a way, but like uh, it's, it's you know, it can be a lot, especially with like, I don't know if if you ever expected this game to blow up this much, because obviously it took the world by storm. Uh, <laughs> it's all over social media. I'm not going to lie. I knew of its existence thanks to TikTok. Because it's oh, just really? yeah, it just came up on my for you page, and I was like, "What is this game?" Like, I I I wasn't aware entirely. Like, yeah. I knew that something Dungeons and Dragons related is going to come out, and and you know, I do like Dungeons and Dragons. I played it as well, but I was like, I didn't know how it would work as a game, so I was like, yeah. not really paying attention to it. And then it just showed up on my TikTok, and I think it was actually one of the scenes with Will. Okay. And that's and that's what I saw first, and I was like, okay, now I'm I'm checking this out, and then, then I just <laughs> into the wormhole of just an hour of just bothers get bothers get bothers. Okay, okay, so this, okay, so I'm buying it. All right, <laughs> that's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, no, it's um, it blew up like properly. Oh no, blew massively, up. massively, and 
I always say I had no idea. Yeah. When I say like I had no idea, like I genuinely had zero idea because I used to be a huge gamer. Mm -hmm. Less so now. And also because I'd come on late to the project, my thing was just work. Mine was just work, work, yeah. work, work, work. I wasn't thinking about anything else or it was only when it kind of got to maybe June, maybe Neil was like, yo, this this game could do big things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess so. But I don't know any, I don't even know about, you know, the huge fan base and everything like that. And I don't, know how many people are waiting for the game when it's come out it's been like a like a flood you know what i mean yeah <laughs> it's it's been amazing i bet it's been amazing. the passion is is unrivaled from the fans i mean Honestly. it's it's a brilliant game i'm not gonna lie and i'm i'm usually like when it comes to like this rpg style of games Mass Effect is my favorite thing ever. So, you know, mm. obviously I do have some experience and then Dragon Age and that's it. Like, that's all I knew that was like, sure. RPG. And then I wasn't sure if I'm going to like it at first because there are obviously a lot of differences. Like it uses the whole d, &D system very heavily and it's mm. different from sitting at the table or through Zoom and playing it like that sure, and sure. Then, then doing it in a video game. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this. And then you just get deeper into it and suddenly I'm at my second playthrough at this point. Yeah. <laughs> because I realized that I missed so many things during the first one. And I'm kind of that people pleaser that I just want the best ending for everyone. <laughs> so I it's know like, we have to go back. <laughs> we need to do this and, again. <laughs> There's so many iterations for what can happen. Like it's is mind blowing. Bad. Like every single, every single base is covered just to give you that experience of yes. you know you don't feel like oh there's just an A and a B option. Do you know what I mean? There's no definitely there's not. <laughs> yeah. So um, no, a lot of, a lot of time went into it. Did they throw like lines at you randomly that, okay, now we have to record this and they didn't really explain it because there are so many things that they thought about that, you know, crazy gamers like myself would do <laughs> in the game that mm. you just in awe of like, I don't know, there are like random things where you can uh, collect all the barrels and then put it in the goblin camp and just blew up everything and they have a dialogue for that or there's like, you know, this... I don't know, crazy thing where you can just push someone off the bridge and, and there's the mm -hmm. dialogue for that. And I'm like, how? <laughs> how yeah. is this possible? <laughs> no, the writers are unbelievable. They're unbelievable because just the amount they have to write, the amount that it's tailored from right? each character, like the relationship wise and knowing the character inside out. So, you know, I just have to serve... You know, in this, like the playwright, we say, serve the playwright. So um, mm -hmm. I wasn't really, in, I have, you know, artistic license with the lines. You get me? So I can do with them what I will. But in terms of the idea of the lines and, and what could happen, no, mm -hmm. that's, i got to give all credit to the writers for that one. Yeah, yeah. that's strict, like, you know. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> God, it's like, oh, mind-blowing, honestly. Um, And now on to the... Uh, you know let's let's dig a bit deeper and sure. uh, did you always know that you're going to be an actor or was this something that came later in your life where you where you were like oh yeah I want to do this how did that happen I'm a theater kid so I'm like I'm always interested to know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no honestly I've always wanted to do it okay. um, cool I think my mom said when I was like when I first said to her I wanted to be an actor, I was 12, my mum said. So, yeah, pretty small. And I was doing, um, we have this thing called Stagecoach here. So it's like a theatre school. So it's like, you know, triple threat, acting, mm. singing, dancing. Me and my sister used to do that every weekend nice. um, for like three or four hours. You know, I went from that, then... um went to another school, uh, a famous school here called Sylvia Young, mm -hmm. which does like theatre training in the UK. And it was kind of weird, like just, it was kind of like steps, like did that, then GCSE drama in school, then mm -hmm. eight level drama. And then from there, I thought I could just go into the world and be an actor from there. I was like 18, 
I had like a small time agent. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, you know, when you're 18, you know, you think you kind of know yeah. everything, you know, <laughs> what I mean, what's what, like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this and smash it. And then um, a woman called Anna, who had trained me a little bit from when I was like 15, 16, mm-hmm. she said, you should go to drama school. And I'd never really thought about drama school, but she, she said, you should go there and you'll be able to broaden the range of characters that you can play. And I thought, you know, that makes a lot of sense. You know, you don't want to be typecast in any kind of way and, you know, be a versatile actor. Yeah. You know, I auditioned for drama school and luckily I got to go to one of my top picks on my first, nice. first year of trying and then just kind of went from there. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I, uh, because to be honest, and the other thing that they might not say at the beginning, but it's it's a good thing to know, is that mm. uh, you, especially in the UK, because I, I also live there as well for this <laughs> to, to do acting and nobody told me like how seriously they take like having a drama school behind you honestly is yeah, yeah, I, yeah i was like because everyone kept asking on all the casting so which drama school did you go to and i was like um <laughs> none but i did theater for 15 years does that count exactly, <laughs> exactly. no i think like drama school and working on jobs is the exact same thing you end up in the so same true. yeah you just end up in the same place do you know what i mean yeah For people who like i was really young so mm. i started there when i was 19 yeah and most people in my class were like 22 23 at mm-hmm. that kind of time so they'd done like a little bit of work or had some more life experience mm-hmm. and me i was just like a very sort of raw like uncut do you know what I mean yeah. I thought acting a little bit I thought acting back then was just like <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it like like I literally thought it was acting like you have to pull these faces and yeah you have yeah, to, yeah you know yeah. what I mean like yeah. I, I think it was like that back in the day and then you go there and you're just like chucked in and you're like whoa this is this is it's much more <laughs> this is more exposing I'd say as well exposing it's not you know it's not pretend really we really have mm-hmm. to go there yeah go in there really um just open my eyes to the to the yeah. whole world and, and the craft for yeah. sure I did get jobs but <laughs> it's mm. like it's an ongoing team here on this podcast that uh I am known as the Sean Bean of extras because okay. literally everything I did I die in Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm the dead person. So if you see a dead person in a movie, that's probably like... me. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like literally the first time they they you know offered me like an extra role and then I was like so happy and whatnot. And then they were like, so you gotta die. And I was like, great. Like you know, it's, it's always my dream to do that. <laughs> and I think it just stuck on me. And I don't know how. Just dying so well that they need to keep recasting you. I'm like, damn, look at the way she died. It's, it's just you know perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I someone told me that it means that I'm going to be immortal. And I was like, okay, mm. I'm fine with that. I'll you know, take that. I'll take why, that. Why not? <laughs> I love movies, so I can watch as many as I want. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Might, might as well. So, like, but but it, it definitely felt a lot harder to to get, like, speaking roles. And, like, the biggest like regret of my entire life and it's it's no one's fault it's the pandemic's fault obviously is that when I first my uh, first booked my first speaking role in an independent film it was in 2020 oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah yeah and yeah. then uh, <laughs> uh, first it was an email that oh okay guys so we're not shooting because obviously it's the lockdown and everything and like, hey, it's fine it's okay we, we can do it later and then another email came and another mm-hmm. and then the last email came and they were like we are very sorry we have to pull the money out of it otherwise we're gonna starve to that so we were like yeah, yeah understandable so yeah do you know what though like obviously that's unfortunate that that happened but there'll be more speaking roles that come around for you in the future because honestly it's even like me with this game it's when you least expect something yeah. to happen that it just comes around and you're like wow well, where did this where did this come from? Because I always say, if it's for you, it won't pass you. Mm. Do you get what I mean? So, I agree. Meant to happen then, then you weren't 
if you didn't do that then and now you're doing something different now do you get what I mean so it all kind of you can still come yeah. around I'm I'm still like <laughs> yeah man. fingers okay. crossed fingers crossed <laughs> uh did you ever think when you started the whole I'm gonna be an actor and doing the drama school and everything did you ever think that you're gonna end up in in such a massive game and were it ever on the on the play to you know do a game at some point in your life and and act in a game mm -hmm. or did it literally just came out of nowhere like oh I'm gonna be in a game because <laughs> I did that little mocap job before yeah. I don't think I'd ever really connected the dots like that do you know what I mean like for example I was I was never like looking at games like oh that's obviously I know it sounds really obvious now in it but like like that's the actor doing all the movements and the voice there I was just looking at it as the game so game, yeah. even just doing motion capture has opened my eyes to the sense of like no we are really fundamental actors to this process and mm -hmm. I had no idea that I was going to be in a project as high profile and, and um, acclaimed as this one I, it was on, it wasn't on my radar to be honest but okay. do you know what though that's actually quite a lot of things because when I became an actor I wanted to do you know, it's the classic in it like I want to do tv and yeah. film and that and then I started doing more theater and then I started doing audio books and now I'm doing mm -hmm. motion capture. So it's really broad, like the things you can do as it an really actor. Is. I don't think, I, I think if you ask a lot of young actors today who were my age when I was in drama school, mm -hmm. oh, uh, do, you, do you see yourself ending up in games and, and motion capture? I don't think a lot of them would have even, probably not, wouldn't have even crossed their mind. Mm. We're not, we're not taught about that as as young actors. I think even to broaden it out a little bit, a lot of actors don't even know about voiceovers and and audiobooks. You'd be surprised. That's a good point, yeah. You'd be really, really surprised, like who like actors who'd be absolutely brilliant in in motion capture and voice, they it's it's not really crossed their mind. So I can say that I was probably one of those people, but I'm really thankful to be involved now oh yeah it's, it's awesome it's awesome 100 yeah. and, and it's like you know, because i keep seeing this conversation coming up obviously um uh, i always love games so it was always like a big part of my entire life basically and sure. i i was always aware of the actors who are behind the voices because mm. uh it is acting like 100%. i think it, it, it was deborah who, who pointed it out on twitter maybe that uh it it's not voice acting it's acting Oh yeah, it's both. It's actually both. It's, it's both. voice acting and acting. It's like it's actually like TV, stage, and audiobooks like fused. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. everything in one. Exactly because it's like you know, especially now, like nowadays when games started using motion capture and everything, it it becomes like proper acting because it's it's not just like you know the actor goes into the booth and records. The, the lines and that's it it's it's much more than that it's it's like you know physical yeah. and everything so it's it's acting Done. <laughs> it's it's definitely acting so i i i'm i'm always like because i see people like roger clark who, who's like most well known from red dead redemption to you and and more and more actors pointing out like you know let's call it what it is <laughs> it's oh no 100 percent, 100 percent. because also fans of the game will demand it do you oh, know yeah. i mean as as like graphics and like game mechanics and and things get better then the demands for the characters and the acting are going to get better naturally do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so good acting can only aid the storyline that like actors we are storytellers you know what i mean that's yeah. that's essentially what we are so no it's 100 percent in that realm and then you're starting to see like more like hollywood a-listers getting into games and mm -hmm emotion capture because obviously as you know the gaming industry is massive yes. massive yeah. like there's so much even though it's huge there's even further places it can go oh yeah oh, right yeah. so um i know 100 percent is is acting in its truest form i mean Baldur's gate has a few big names in there like freaking jk simmons friend he started uh talking i was like that's JK. I know that voice. <laughs> That's JK. It's like, oh yes. Awesome. Did awesome. you meet him? I have to know. I didn't meet him, unfortunately. <gasps> oh, oh 
Oh my god. <laughs> Do you know what's mad though? Like there's huge like A listers in the game, but there's so many actors in this game. Oh yeah. Like, like two hundred and sixty four. Yeah, maybe around that, maybe like just under three hundred, yeah. Yeah. Um actors I know personally. And then they're like, Oh, I'm in I'm in this game. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, I'm talking a few of them. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. such a huge project. Like, if you think about how much lines had to be written and oh, how much yeah. uh, footage had to be gone through, and nice, no, it's a it's a feat for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Here's here's an interesting question for you. I asked this from Deborah, and I think it's people want to know. If Baldur's Gate was playing in today's society where there's movies and TV and music available, what would be the favorite movie of Will? You know what? It would be, it would, <laughs> this just popped into my head. It'd be Gladiator. A hundred percent. No, Gladiator with Russell Crowe. Like, mm-hmm. um, it's got to be that film because it's just so epic. And we would just, love him. Yeah, like, do you know what? I actually got asked, like, um, the other day, did I uh, base my character on anyone? And I couldn't think, like, instinctively if I did base Will on anyone. Mm-hmm. But I'd say, like, the, the character that Russell Crowe plays is probably mm-hmm. as close to the caricature of what I was aiming for because he's just okay. righteous and noble like exterior puffed out chest but interior he's got so much mm-hmm. depth and emotion going on so i'd probably say gladiator would be on repeat for will raven guard like yeah i awesome. i think that's very true <laughs> <laughs> or anything great- that's like very heroic i i think we would love to ju- definitely to just, definitely know, just- Saving Private Ryan. That's my one of my favorite movies. Right? <laughs> like I or Hawks Orange with Andrew Garfield. Like that's yeah, I think that would be like a perfect one for Will. And I will tell you that Deborah said that if uh, Laser would watch any movies, Gladiator was one of them. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> it's a great film. Listen, anyone watching this interview and you haven't seen Gladiator, you stick that on. <laughs> you yes. won't regret it. <laughs> That's so true. Like, and it's it's gonna have like a we're gonna get a second Gladiator movie soon ish. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what it's gonna be about. Or I don't know if Russell Crowe's gonna be on the front line like that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'm like I'm 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 a bit worried because uh, all these like uh, let's do prequels, let's do sequels, let's do this, let's it's, remake. Yeah. Let's... I'm 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 a, I'm a bit tired of it. I'm not. It's gonna... like when um. You know, like the Bad Boys franchise oh. with Will Smith and yeah, Martin, Martin Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. And then they made like Bad Boys, I think, three, like yes. a few years ago. And I was Wasn't like, it four? Was it might it have been four. It might have been four. Might have been four. four. But I was like, these men are old. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they need to leave it to the young bucks to do the to do the running around <laughs> and the police chasing. Um, That's that was, a bad boy. <laughs> that was, do you know? What I mean, it was weird. It was weird. Like the, I don't know how long twenty year, twenty year gap. Um, it, it has to be like at least twenty. About twenty years. Yeah. 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 It's like, but then it's it's, it's just not the same. Without sounding mean or anything, but it's it's oh, you know true. it's it's just imp- like of course like one of my favorite things is Jurassic Park, so oh, yeah. obviously when they announced that uh, the original three or will come back to the last Jurassic World movie, I was <laughs> just so happy, but it's not the same. <laughs> it's yeah. Like- I love them and it was great to see them again. First of all, I don't think the movie did them justice. That's just, mm. you know. Uh, but like, it's just, it's just, I don't know. The originals, in it? The originals, like, you always got mm-hmm, mm-hmm, love yeah. for those. Yeah, like yeah. those, like, late 90s kind of oh, yeah. early noughties films. They're just classics. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's weird. They don't really make film like, really original films like oh, that. No. They don't make those anymore. It's very, very hard to find. 
for her channel once at this point. 100%. I will I will give you a recommendation though. I just watched this recently in the cinema and it's so beautiful. It's the creator from Gareth okay. Edwards. Uh and it's a completely original story from him. Um uh, with John David Vash- uh, Washington uh in the main cool. role. Fucking amazing. Sure. Really? The you know visuals everything. It's an eighty million budget movie, and it's better looking than some of the recent Marvel. Yeah, movies. and I'm a Marvel fan, so I'm like you know. But I have to say it out loud. Like it's it's beautifully done. Acting is gorgeous. Everything is gorgeous, and it sure it could have gone further into the deeper tones. But like you know, it's an original movie. <laughs> it's yeah, a good one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now I'm gonna check that out. The creator. The creator. Hundred percent on the big screen. Like I highly um, recommend it because okay. it's it was I cried my eyes out, but I cry on everything, so it's not like a big thing to say. <laughs> but it's very, very good, and and I'm always happy when I see movies like that getting a chance from studios to be made. It's, yeah, it's like please do that more. Like sure, I get that people will still jump on remakes and and whatever more willingly because it's like mm-hmm. you know we know this formula and whatever. But but we need we need take more things. risks, right? Yeah, take more risks. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It needs just do something new. It, need, it needs it's a shake up. It needs a shake up. I think that's why like um, you could say TV is so big right now because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. writers are just allowed to take oh, so yeah. many risks with storylines and character developments Mm -hmm. because you know in a film which is two two and a half hours even with the original things there's only so much you can do in that space of time do you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and you know i'm sure they're you know cutting down chopping editing etc so in a tv show from say episode one to episode 10 you can have so 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 much happen so i think that's why the rise of that's oh yeah very expensive yeah yeah i I agree i agree uh and since you mentioned it is there something very good that you're watching right now on tv what would you recommend to people uh to check out i mean i just finished top boy okay okay (laughs) (laughs) yeah top boy is just like the staple um because i'm from i'm from london so that film that tv show i guess it was the finale. Mm-hmm. And um, if someone had, like, obviously there's this conception of London and England that it's like, oh, we all drink tea and drink tea and eat yeah. crumpets and, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing that we get. But obviously it's not all, like, gangstery in London. But it does give you, like, a sense of how people kind of speak in London and things like that. So it resonates with a lot of people here. Mm-hmm. And um, Kano's performance in it is is brilliant. It's it's really really good. So I just finished Top Boy. I'd say I need a new show actually to get stuck into. Oh, so, what, uh, what kind of shows do you like? Like you know, give me a feel because I watch a lot of things. I I may be able to recommend something. <laughs> oh, do you know what one of my favorite shows is? Um, do you know Dark on Netflix? Yes. You know, I no. always say that this is like the podcast where we find a new best friend for me. I think you're in. <laughs> like, <laughs> Honestly, like that show, yeah. I swear it changed me. Like watched it all the way through. Watched it all the way through again. Because it just blew my mind. It's like, amazing. Because obviously you can have good writing, like in terms of dialogues and duologues and monologues. But for me, that was good writing in how complex the the timelines were. And how, you know, I won't give a spoiler away, but that show is amazing. Amazingly well acted and obviously it's a German show. and Mm -hmm. Amazing. I love them kind of shows like Supernatural, like Stranger Things. You get me? Like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, I I feel that 100%. Uh, How do you feel about uh, Korean movies? And, and TV shows. Did you watch anything Korean? Like, just to say my favorite thing, which is Train to Busan. Have you ever seen that? No, I think I tried to watch that years ago because my friend put me on. Um, I haven't watched it. No, I've watched... Um, what's that film that won an Oscar like? Uh, Parasite? Parasite. Mm-hmm. Parasite. And did you like it? I loved it. 
I loved it. I loved it. That that film was amazing. Like Korean storyline, <laughs> Korean storylines are just so, mm -hmm. just, just intricate. Just super, super intricate. I could even just broaden that to like, like East Asian and like and I'm a big anime. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like their character development and their stories, mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, let's do that in films and. And blue, even I don't know if Squid Game is Korean. I'm not sure. Oh, it, oh, it is absolutely. It is. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, amazing. Train to Busan has been on my list though. Like, look, for a while. I, I I said this a million times, but I have to tell you, I got, it's the I got best to zombie movie ever. Really, easily beats out everything that the US or anyone made. It's I watched it, and I'm not joking. I've seen it at this point a hundred times. At least, right. and every time it same emotions. Uh, I like ev it just gets me in the feels every single time. The characters are so freaking brilliantly written, and obviously it's like a big ass mirror to today's society as well, which was okay. what zombie movies were always meant to be, basically. Yeah. Uh, and it's just everything in it is just perfect. But I but I know I I lose this term very loosely, but it is in this case I I would easily say that it is. It's no it's way. So I'm like every time someone comes on. So did you watch Train to Busan? Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I, me. Now. <laughs> yeah. So based on that, I will recommend it to you because if you like dark, are you are you okay with zombies? By the way, because not many people like. You know. Yeah, I can do with zombies. Yeah, I can do with zombies. zombies. Okay, yeah. okay, then Kingdom. It's Kingdom. a yes. It's a Korean. Uh, it, it has two seasons. It's a Korean TV show. Uh, it's a Netflix original. Uh, oh. it's something else. Honestly, like if if I said that Train to Busan is the best zombie movie, then I would say that Kingdom is the best uh, zombie TV show. Are they like realistic zombies? Do get... What what do you mean by realistic? <laughs> no, because you know, like. <laughs> you know when you watch some zombie things yeah like and i don't know it depends like because i'm thinking in my head like how fast do the zombies move like, yeah very fast in train to busan yeah so i yeah. like that because you know in walking dead when they're just like oh yeah they're just mad they're just slow <laughs> okay just like, walk away <laughs> just so do you know what i mean you could literally just like jog and like yeah and just be on <laughs> yeah i need it to be like they are fast yeah. Okay. And very scary. So <laughs> very scary. Ooh, okay. So these two I highly recommend. Like thank I you. thank you. They they definitely put me into my like I, I have to watch more Korean things. So I've been eating them up lately. Like there are so hey. many good ones. They I, I think I got like a little bit of fatigue of, of the American uh TV shows at, at sure. one point. Yeah. And I and I found the freaking treasure land at this point that is korean <laughs> cinema korean. and tv and it's awesome i'm gonna check those out for sure yes King please train kingdom and train to busan that's Thank you. my favorite question is coming up what is not your favorite movie what is your comfort movie that you can watch anytime anywhere it doesn't matter it just gives you that feeling of peace of of just you know this is a good film i can just rewind it and watch it again and again and it's it's still gonna be freaking brilliant i got a, i got a few you know okay okay a few like i <laughs> like get out i think is one of my favorite films just yes. yeah like it's just it's <laughs> i just find it like it's so well made and so funny i remember like because that come out in 2017 and there's this cinema um in london called peck and plex yes yes and yes. like it's just known like notoriously for just being like super cheap like even when i was mm -hmm. super young it was like 2.99 oh, okay. yeah. i yeah. think now it's like 4.99 still yeah, cool. that's great. So um, you go there, but when you go Peck and Plex, you go there for an experience. Okay. You know, you're you're not gonna be. It's not like Odeon or View or Every Man, where everybody's just like, <laughs> not like that. You know what I mean? People yeah. people get into the film. So watching Get Out, like 
that film with with Daniel Kaluuya and, and Jordan Peele directing is such a um I don't know, it invokes so much emotion in you anyway. Even if mm. you're watching that film by yourself for the first time, you're like, oh my days. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I watched that in the cinema, like honestly, people were screaming. People were like, no, don't go in there. Like full on belly laughs. Like it was it was amazing. And I've seen that film a lot of times. And yeah. that film just It's brilliant. Don't, it don't get old for me. It don't get old comfort films yeah i'd say that's the main mm -hmm. i'd say that's the main one it's a good one uh, <laughs> it's a very good one i love i love the matrix i love that film as well all of them or just the first the first one's my the first one's my okay, um, yeah that's my goat that one um and like comfort tv show yes that i'll just throw on would be like Fresh Prince of Bella. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's just, you know what I mean? That show just don't get old. It no. really, really doesn't. Like, no, nope. it's just <laughs> perfection. Did you watch the Bel Air series that they made? I didn't. I remember seeing the trailer for that though, and it looked they tried to do like a like a serious take on yeah, yeah, those life. Yeah, I, I never saw it though. I haven't seen it yet, but everyone is keep being like, it's really good. No, I really? Don't. Yeah, but, but you know, Fresh Prince is, is like, because I, when Fresh Prince came out here in Hungary, I was like 10? Something yeah. like that? 10 or 9? And it was my, obviously, it was my first time seeing Will Smith as well. And I was yeah. like, I was just hooked, like, instantly. I love the whole thing so much that it's very dear and close to my heart so I'm like I don't know how I feel about like a more serious another yeah know. and it's another remake it's another remake yeah so. and that's the other thing like and it's not Will Smith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm like I don't know <laughs> I it's might so, check it out yeah it's such a hard thing like to even try and do again because that was so so successful um I mean, I don't know how I feel about it. Like, I wish them all the success on it. But it's even sometimes with like a song in it. Like, oh yeah, you hear like a remix of a song, and you're like, oh, you shouldn't have touched that classic. Do you know what I mean? That was yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was it? Do you know what I mean? They they created perfection there. So I don't know. I'll probably just... maybe 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 later. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> there, there are just things that you just put away for like one day. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I I believe people like it's it, because I heard it from friends that I trust uh, with their taste and whatever, and and they were like, yeah, it's it's really good and whatnot. But I'm like, it's just too too close to the heart, the original. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just like, oh no, I don't I don't know if I want <laughs> or if I'm ready for that. That's the better for to to just watch something that's like kind of the same, but not really. It's uh, oh, it's mm. weird feeling. It's a weird feeling. Uh, Righty. Uh, then the other big question, uh, usually on our podcast, is I ask the comfort, and I'm asking for the favorite because that's like you know, kind of if if you have to choose, Letterbox uh, does this. Uh, whenever they go out for interviews, uh, maybe choose your top four. I would say let's do top favorite four. films. Yeah, and TV shows as well. I want to know those. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have named a few of them already, you know. Okay, so get out, I'm guessing. Can get out, 100%. That's gladiator? Up. Pardon? The Gladiator. gladiator exactly, yeah. Gladiator. So we have two. Matrix. The Matrix is has got to be there. I'm trying to think of what another classic could be that I like. Do you know what? <laughs> this one's kind of funny. Like, one classic film from my childhood okay that i love yeah is um is hook with robin williams I and that's the, yeah. like i uh, me and my sister like mm -hmm. love that film and to be honest anything with robin williams like yes uh, yeah without fire like oh, i love that fire yeah those, those, yeah and like if i watch those films now 
you know they're just like we said kind of you know old school original yeah films so yeah i'd say those four uh, yeah i love that i can't i can't watch i mean i know you've suggested kingdom and and train to busan but i'm not the best with horrors (laughs) (laughs) i'm not the best you know what it is it's psychological horrors okay so like scary stuff i can do like zombies or like kind of blood and that kind of stuff but Mm -hmm. psychological it could be under your bed like them ones Uh, but get out is kind of like that exactly exactly yeah no it makes you think it makes you think but that's got like that light-heartedness after because i remember even watching horror films when i was younger Mm -hmm. and then people would be like oh yeah like that was that was a sick film and i'd be like yeah that was really sick like you know (laughs) (laughs) just like thinking about it for time after Um, yeah yeah but yeah well they they stay with you oh yeah 100 percent because I love horrors, like that's one of my things. Because I honestly think it's one of the hardest genres to to really do well in. Because yeah. it's it's like you know you're walking like a very thin line of of very good horror movies and then very bad ones. And it's usually like there's not really an in between. Like it's... maybe maybe a few films and TV shows can be stuck in an in between, but like it's 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 like either very good or either very bad. <laughs> it's it's like and there's very few very good ones i will just you know it's a very controversial <laughs> opinion <laughs> but it's it's i'm always very joyful when i find something that is horror and it's just it's, yeah just good just very really good like you know like i have to ask because it's again one of my favorite things have you ever seen alien with sigourney weaver yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. What did you think? Because that's the first Alien is definitely a horror movie. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Um, I, I, I like that. Like action. Okay. That's more. That's more exciting. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I need to rewatch it again. I saw that ages ago. It's. I can deal with that kind of horror. Okay. okay. I can't. It's. Do you know what I can't deal with? And I've never watched it for. Because I know what it will do to me. It's like paranormal activity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't watch that. You know what I mean? Because I'll start just going nuts and like it will be with me, like in my day kind of thing. So yes, yes. it's like, you know what? I'll stick to watching Hook with Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> which is a very good choice let's be honest yeah. <laughs> you know it's I'm, just, I'm, I'm always trying to convince people to watch more horror because it's when it's good it's very good but we'll like I, baby steps baby steps, baby steps, baby steps yeah. exactly if you're good with zombies then Train to Busan and Kingdom will be just perfect for you like it's it's honestly oh just the best <laughs> thing I, I have to rewatch those it's not like I haven't seen Train to Busan like two weeks ago but it's, it, it, it doesn't matter <laughs> like I'll watch it again <laughs> I watch it this week. Yeah, why not? Uh, okay, all right. Uh, let's let's uh, roll into the TV shows. What are the, what are the four favorite? Like, uh, like Fresh Prince, obviously. Dark can be there. What else could be there on that top four TV show list for you? It's hard being put on the spot like this. Show. I know, I know. <laughs> but it's exciting. Obviously, I love Stranger Things. Yes. I'm trying to think of, like, something I watched in all my days. Like, I ain't watched this in age in ages. Mm-hmm. Sick show called Utopia. I don't know if you ever watched that. I'm not sure. It's you got to watch that. Like, I, I can't even remember it that well, but that's, like, one of the best British shows I ever watched. It used to come on Channel 4. Okay. They. It's what was like it about? Murder, it's kind of like murder mystery, not quite murder mystery. It's just got like incredible, incredible writing. I think they did it for two seasons. Okay. And then it stopped after that. But I've got to say, Utopia, that's popped into my head. Even um, Black Mirror. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's got to be up there just because oh, yeah. it's diversity and. Yeah. Yeah, and it gets under your skin. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and where it can go, where it can go. I rewatched like some of the old ones of that the other day, like the um the contact lens one. Oh. No, that one. <laughs> when yeah. he's you know, you can record mm-hmm. like, when you see him, you can like play it back to people. That one's amazing. It is uh, a good one. So Black Mirror is definitely up there as well. Um can I say animes? Can I say anime? Of animes? course. Yes, please. You no, know, like one show, Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Well, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Super. Like they mm-hmm. had everyone in my kind of generation just on the ropes. Like, yeah. We loved them characters. We wanted to be them characters, those storylines. Mm-hmm. Even rappers will, will drop names from Dragon Ball Z in there their bars and things like that so Dragon Ball Z I can watch even now I love that so it's a very good one it's awesome Awesome. it's a very good one what about uh, Attack on Titan Attack on Titan I started that but I never finished it (gasps) I started that but I never finished it oh no you gotta you gotta no I need to because my cousins were on me they were like you need to watch this you need to watch Attack on Titan like they were like forcing me to watch it so I need to finish but yeah this where I got to I was like yeah this is this is dope uh, what about the Studio Ghibli movies, the Hayao Miyazaki ones, like Hall's Moving Ca- uh, Castle or Chihiro, Spirited Away? That was the, that was the English title. Yeah, a while ago. Yeah, I was, I was more like the action ones, you know. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> like the like Naruto and oh uh, yeah, them kind of ones. Yeah, but like we used to take it so seriously, like. Dragon Ball Z especially, like... But you gotta. <laughs> like, I'm talking, like, in school, like, we'd go out to play, and then everyone would, like, shotgun... Shotgun means, like, you know, you shotgun your character, like, yep. what character you are. every lunchtime, every time I was with my cousins, we're playing this game on, like, the PS2 um, or Xbox, like, the yep. Dragon Ball Budokai games. Yeah, it was just... That's, that's up there for me. Oh, yeah. I, mean? I, I can understand why, 100%. It was, like... Here we had Dragon Ball Z, and that's it. That's all we got in Hungary. So I had to look for all the other things <laughs> later on. I was like, I need more. <laughs> Give me more. And then obviously I was able to. So many episodes. So many. But it's okay. It's good. <laughs> Let's feed the nerd in us. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, before we j- jump uh, onto the next uh, question, I would recommend uh, one of my favorite animes to you. It's, um, I think it was, it was a short series so it's like not like i don't know 10 seasons or something like that i think it was i don't want to say something stupid it was either eight episodes or 10 okay something like this i can never say it correctly and people have been correcting me about it uh so i will just show it i hopefully it's oh wait i'm gonna turn off my ring light for a second so you can see no no, you can see still it's come on come on work for me hold on it's this one. Okay. A review of the anime, Elfin Lied. That's how I say it as well, but people have been, no, that's not how you say it. How do they say it? Elfin Lied? Lied? Like, like, okay. Why? So th- it's this one. It's honestly, it's an action one. And it's it's like yeah. a deep psychological one. As well. So you, you know, it might be a bit of <laughs> 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 But it's a good one. It's a very good one, I promise. And it's it's very bloody. Okay. Like, they weren't afraid of anything in it. Yeah. That's like Attack on Titan as well, though, isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, this, this is a gem. This is a gem. Like, I highly, yeah, highly recommend it. Thank highly. you. It's a very good one. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, I have to ask, because obviously you played D&D recently. Whoa, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need you to make another one. Did you watch your one? I want to know what was that experience like because that was your first time playing the Andy. First time. It was my first time. I I loved it. I I I loved it. I only wish that I I just need to play it more. Oh yeah. I I need to play it more because there's so much stuff going on. There's so much stuff going on. And you know, Mark and 
and Neil and and I had Sam next to me who's played it before. Yeah. And you know she was helping me with the dice rolls and like no use that dice and you know that was amazing. But like I'd heard of Dungeons and Dragons and yeah. obviously like they play it in Stranger Things and oh yeah yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's in like popular culture. Do you know what I mean? It's in like TV shows and things like that. But I didn't realize. Uh, I did. I didn't realize. Yeah, that you could do anything in it. Do you know what I mean? I you really it, can. <laughs> you can do anything in it. Do you know what I mean? I thought it was like a world that yes. you're confined in, and you're kind of doing the same thing every time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when, yeah. So when I've got the like rules and instructions learn how to play it I'm like what well, we can do anything like we can literally do anything Whatever so <laughs> yeah so I love that I love that playthrough but I just I need to play it again oh yeah to, okay I can not um I wanted to say impose but impose is the wrong word like I want to do you know what I mean I want to yeah. just do you get me uh, yes because it's it's yeah. it's daunting playing it for the first time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. scary even. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was, you know, it's funny. Like, I was thinking if I do something mad, I could derail the whole game in it. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. <laughs> honestly, honestly, because like, if you get to know me, I'll just do something mad in the game, and everyone will be like, "Bro, like, you're you like me, then yes." You you can't you can't do that. Of course you get it. <laughs> what are you yeah, about? <laughs> but that's what I learned, right? So, you know, the the GM we had an incredible GM. Oh yeah, yeah. Can navigate anything that you kind of throw at them, and I guess that's the beauty of the game. It's just using your imagination and and bouncing off each other. It's 100%. it's awesome. It's awesome. I need to do game number two. That's pending. Oh, yes. Yes. A hundred percent. You have to like uh, when I first played uh, with my friends, the magic of, you know, the pandemic and everything. So we played through Zoom uh, and it was my very first time. And I was like, I was the same. I was like, so you can do anything? So <laughs> like, yeah, sure. I'm like, <laughs> that was no. the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just went full idiot mode because I was like, you know, the, the, the GM was like, okay, so you step into this room and there's this big button and I'm like, oh, let's touch it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's like, though. That's what it's like, because I guess that's, um, I mean, I'm linking it back to acting in a roundabout way, but like, it kind of makes sense what I'm going to say. Okay, okay. Um, Like in these games and when you're playing acting or make-believe, it's like you have the opportunity to... I mean, it's a it's an escape from reality at the end of the it day. Is. You know what I mean? And you have the scope to do these things. So when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, um, you can be as bold as you want or as confident as you want or as low-key as you want or as sly as you want because you're you're creating the game. It's it's not real. But for those times when you are playing the game, you can suspend reality and, and just be so I think that's why um it's so fun because it's just an escape do you know what i mean yeah oh 100 a... i agree i agree and that's why i think every actor should play dnd <laughs> oh no 100 percent. once in their life i like i just recently find out and i i think this is gonna be like a new information for you as well you know who's a big dungeons and dragons fan and plays like all the time no win diesel Really? <laughs> I was like, I was so surprised. I was yeah. like, no, yeah, really? I, I can't even imagine him playing D and D, you know. And he I loves like it. That. He loves I it. Like it's 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 mental. I I think he he was even on I, I, because I'm I'm just recently uh, catching up with Critical Role, and I think he was even on on Critical Role at one point, or at least he did something with Matt Mercer. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, like yes, you know a few. <laughs> like a few of my pals like they messaged me when it came out and they were like oh you're playing D D. like i've played that before and i was like what like <laughs> i was just so surprised in it i was like <laughs> how's everyone been playing this without me um right why would they invite <laughs> me <laughs> so yeah i need to um 
I need to play again. 100%. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. It's so much fun, and it's it's just time just flies away. Really, like yeah. we 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 used to play for like five hours, and it just went by without a blink. Basically, I was like, oh, we're, we're done. We're, why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done. I still want to be an idiot. <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's so much fun. All right, before we close this down, I have uh, two more questions. One is. What's in the future for you? Are there any big, big plans or or uh, are there any projects lined up that we can look forward to? And you can talk about, obviously. <laughs> what, what can we expect from the future for you? Um, I got a film, actually, a short film coming out soon okay. called Ten of Swords. Um, ironically, from what we're speaking about, that's a zombie film. <gasps> yeah. So it's that- for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's a zombie, but it's got a bit of a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's got a bit of a twist on it because it's a zombie film from the perspective of the zombies, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Are you playing a zombie? I might be. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Oh, um, so, man, is it coming out? I want to see it now. <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's actually going to a few film festivals okay. in, in the States, um, one in LA, I forget the name, and one in Utah. And then that will come out later this year. So that'll be out, yeah, Ten of Swords. So oh, that's yeah, exciting. look out for that one. That yes. was a really, really fun one to work on. Oh, I bet. Um, and in the future, just more of the same. Do you know what I mean? I'm so grateful to be in the position mm. I'm in. Um, and like, now I've done motion capture. I've done so many like incredible audio books I've done as mm-hmm. well. You know, I've, I've done amazing bits of TV. Like it's just more of the same for me. Do you know what I mean? More of the same. So yeah. Yeah. Watch this space. That's... Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna, <laughs> I definitely, <laughs> gonna. because honestly you're like, I keep saying this to to all of you at this point because you know I, we spoke with Deborah and Sam and there are more people I know from Baldur's Gate uh, to come on the podcast, but but it's true. Like you are all so fucking good in it that oh. I once again felt because honestly, Mass Effect is just right here forever, mm-hmm. and I always searched for that type of connection that you can have with characters in a game and sure it's 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 around mm. but it's it's i think Baldur's gate 3 is the first that really captured that like you know yeah and and everyone is so good and like you're fantastic as well i think Thank you. just brilliant so i i really hope that it's it's just you know just more and more roles coming at you and and be like they're going to be yelling after you like Tio, please come <laughs> and, and be in our game or in our movie or whatever because yeah. it's honestly you deserve it you're brilliant thank you thank you just brilliant so all the very uh, best that's thank uh, you it's a, it's a great ensemble it's a it's a great ensemble because yeah. we're all so different from each other and i think yeah, I think because we're all so different from each other and different characters and credit to the writers as well, I think that's that's done even more for the game. Oh, yeah. you know, because there's such variety there and mm-hmm. we get on and so yeah, I couldn't be couldn't be prouder to be honest. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's really <laughs> good. All right, and the last thing before I let you go is here's a little secret. We're actually going to meet at the end of this month Ooh. in person uh, yeah. at MCM uh, because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat of an artist uh, <coughs> and I usually go out to Comic Cons uh, to, you know, sign my stuff. My stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually prepared something for you as well. Uh, so I'm going to show it. Ooh. You, you're going to get this. Ooh. Very shiny. <laughs> Yes, that is sick. That is sick. Wait, I will take it down a notch. There you go. Jeez. Jeez. I literally finished it today. <laughs> you, wait, how did you do that? Is that like... It's pencil. That's pencil? Yeah. Oh, my days. So it's coming your way. <laughs> so talented, you know. Oh, thank you. 
Oh, you I... are you are so talented. I thought that was just a print. No. Like, <laughs> I thought, oh my days. No, Lily, that's dope. Thank oh, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly. I honestly um, can't wait to meet all of you, to be honest. Yeah. I'm like, so excited. <laughs> See me with Comic Con, yeah, like. I do not know. I've never been to Comic Con. <gasps> You've never been? No. Oh, you're gonna love it. Never been, so you're gonna love it. That's it's gonna, gonna be, be a madhouse. Just be prepared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, very yeah. good. It's very. No, I'm good. excited. I'm excited. Like people have messaged me saying they're coming, and that will be nice to just see the. Obviously, it's it's different when it's in real life compared to online. Like, I love oh, the yeah. stuff, online, but when you see someone in real life, you're like, yo, and you you link exactly. up. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just better it's always better in person let's be honest <laughs> yeah. definitely, definitely. so i i'm looking forward to that i will definitely come to you guys and and you know maybe you can come 100%. to my table <laughs> <laughs> although i i guess you're going to be very busy because as we mentioned Baldur's gate 3 is huge uh you, and i well, i always gonna make time for you so don't worry yeah <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait for the end of this month. Uh, Theo, thank you so much uh, for coming and having this chat with me. Uh, where can people find you on the internet? Yeah, interwebs. So you can find me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Just my name, Theo underscore Solomon. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's my only place, yeah. All right. You heard it. I put it in the description. Find Theo on Instagram. Follow for updates and everything. And, <laughs> you know, comment what was your favorite real moment uh in the game um uh, and uh you know we're gonna be back see you thank you again and to you all watch movies